in this episode, we're going to talk about something that you're either going to find really interesting or really gross, or maybe both, and that's how we deal with our poop. So let's get started. For those of you that are new to the channel, I just want to fill you in on how we've been going to the bathroom so far. This is sort of one of our most asked questions that we pretty much just ignore. When Courtney and I first moved to this property, we were living in our truck camper and going to the bathroom was pretty easy. We would just use the toilet in the camper and then when we'd go to town with the camper to pick up more supplies, we'd just empty the camper at the RV park. It was pretty much just like how we'd been living in our camper for the year before that. But then last winter, we got snowed into our building. The truck camper was stuck up here for the whole winter and we had a problem. Since we weren't driving the truck camper to town anymore, we needed a way to empty our toilet. Luckily, our truck camper had a cassette toilet and we were able to pull the cassette out of the toilet and haul the cassette to town and empty it. And that was really gross. And then last summer, after doing a whole bunch of road improvements, we were actually able to get a porta potty up here and things got way easier for us because now instead of me having to deal with our poop, the septic company was coming up here and servicing our unit once a week. Over the summer, it got pretty smelly in there, but we had other priorities. We had a road to build, we had concrete to get poured, we had a building to build. So we were just never able to prioritize our bathroom until today. We have a new problem now, which is that our porta potty is full, it is frozen, and the septic company can no longer get up here to service it because of the snow on the ground. So we need a better toilet solution. So let's go check out our solution. With winter here and our frozen porta potty, we knew that we needed a solution to get us through this winter. The original plan was to put a septic system in this summer, but with the road debacle and the concrete, we just didn't have the budget or the time to be able to do that, and it's gonna have to wait till next summer. So we looked at a few toilet options, and some of the factors that we really considered were ease of install, how you handle the waste once it's created, and cost. And really, it came down to an incinerator toilet or a composting toilet. And we went with the incinerator toilet for a few reasons that we'll tell you about later, but it just arrived and it's time to get it installed. Installing this toilet really only has two steps. Step one is to install the vent that allows the combustion air out. And step two is to install the electricity so we can plug it in. And then we're done. So there are actually two four inch vents that go through this wall. One allows fresh air into the toilet and the other exhausts the combustion air into the outside world. Well, I think that means the next step is to drill the holes through the wall. I'm kind of scared to hand this to you. Yeah, I'm a little scared. Yeah, I'm also a little scared. This toilet's on a 220 volt circuit. These are 110, so we need to add another outlet to the toilet. It's called an old work box and it's meant to be mounted from the outside of the drywall after the fact. With any luck, we'll be able to get this wire down in the garage. Sweet! There it is. That was way too easy. Never had a toilet wire before. I prefer the version of the toilet that's got electrical instead of plumbing. All right, well, that's it for the inside, at least until Courtney comes and fixes all my mistakes. Now it's time to transfer these holes through the sheet metal on the outside of the building. Drill bit with a long extension, and I'm gonna do my best to get as perpendicular and centered in this hole as possible so that our pipe sticks out straight. Do you have anything to say to the camera, Boone? Oh gosh. Woo! Oh my goodness, there we go. Okay, two holes down, it's time to build the chimney. I always wonder when we're doing projects inside how I don't make way more of a mess. I think I just figured it out though.
<laughs> a mouse over here making a big mess. Apparently it's because Courtney cleans up after me when I'm not looking. <laughs> it has me. Can't even tell it happened. I'm gonna start by sliding the intake. Oh, that one really easily. I expected that to be difficult. And now with any luck, we can slide the toilet into place. Oh, we don't have to do the other one? Uh, I have to do it from the outside. I pushed this off. Oh boy. I broke it. Um, yeah, it just like sits in this groove. I just need to get it back in. Keeps critters from coming in? Exactly. No mice in your toilet. They'd have a bad day. <laughs> mice would not enjoy their experience. <laughs> Now that the toilet is not broken. Okay, try that again. <laughs> Let's make sure that this pipe even fits through the wall. Uh -huh. The pipe fits through the wall. Now we just need to get the pipe connected to the toilet with the pipe through the wall. I pushed some insulation out. That's okay. Oh, it came through. Oh, it's so close. Are you sure it's not in? Oh, it might be. Oh. Oh, oh. Yep. Nice. Nice Sweet. job. Okay, now with the vents outside, it's time to build what I'm gonna call the chimney, which is for the exhaust side, and it's gonna extend up and two feet beyond the eaves. But with this window here, we're gonna have to do something a little funny. And also because we have two foot overhangs on our eaves, we don't wanna have to penetrate the roof. So we're gonna build a little contraption out here. This is like a special elbow that has this fitting on the bottom. This is a condensate drain so that if there's any water condensing in the chimney, it can drain out and not get trapped inside here. The key to successfully doing any sort of difficult task like this is to stick your tongue out in lots of weird ways. The goal is that this ends up over here, uh -huh. the way it's outside of our shed roof struck of outside of our deck roof. Uh -huh. This can come this way and hook into this. Mm -hmm. Okay. It looks kind of stupid. <laughs> hey, be nice. By, by no fault of Riley's, he did a great job on the install. And you can't use 90 degree angles because it can't be horizontal for more than the distance that it comes out of the toilet. We can only have three feet of 45 degree angle, so like this is kind of the most we can do. We were very limited with how we could run this based on the installation instructions. But I think we made the best of it and I think it's gonna work. Okay, update, it is now pouring rain, but the vent is in, which means that all we have left to do is hook up the electrical connection and we're ready to burn some poo. We went back and forth a little bit on whether or not we should do the propane or electric version of this toilet, but part of our goal living off grid is kind of to push the limit of what we can do and what we can use with our power system. So we decided to go ahead and do the electric one. Our system is fully capable of powering this toilet. How much power we're actually gonna use really depends on how often we're using it. So we're looking forward to testing this out and letting you guys know. The biggest challenge for our off-grid power system are long extended times without sunlight like we're in right now. Short days, lots of clouds, so this is going to be a great test to our system. The, the other problem with using a propane appliance is that we have to get the propane up here. So long term, our plan up here is to be all electric so that we don't have to deal with propane or propane deliveries. This is the last... My butt crack is hanging out. <laughs> I have a plumber's crack. <laughs> While you're electrician. But I'm electrician. <laughs> I've hunched over toilets doing work lots of times, but I've never done electrical work hunched over a toilet. <laughs> At least it's a new toilet. <laughs> Very long cord. Plugging it in. <gasps> oh, we lit up. This is it. Ready for use. Really? Yeah. The incineration cycle takes 60 to 70 minutes. So we know nothing about incineration toilets other than what YouTube showed us, but I think it's gonna be really cool. They're supposed to be really clean, really easy to use, and very minimal maintenance. When you need to use the bathroom, you open the lid. Oh. And then the fan turns on, that's a good sign. Isn't that cool? Because it sucks, oh, it sucks the smell the out. Smell away. Then 
This is the one downside I would say to an incineration toilet over a composting toilet is there is a consumable you have to buy. Um, we already have a thousand of them, so I think they'll last a while, but this is a paper liner. You just drop that in like that. And then you go to the bathroom and then you close the lid. After 90 times of using this thing, it'll warn us. And then we have up until 120 times of using it. And then all we have to do is empty the ashtray. It pivots. Oh, that's a hefty container. Unlike a composting toilet, an incineration toilet is making sterile ash that can just be thrown in a garbage can. So after 100 uses, we chuck this, which isn't very much, in a garbage can, and that's it. And then we put it back, and then we get to use it another 100 times. I guess we're going to use it, and then we'll report back to you guys on what it's like. All right, the toilet's ready to burn its first load. Oh, don't worry, it's just a banana. <laughs> Step one is to dump the load. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and then I think all we do from there is close the lid. Oh. The yellow light just turned on, which means we are burning. Okay, so we are using 2400 watts right now. About three or 400 of that is our lights and other stuff that we're powering. So I'm gonna say this toilet's using about 2000 watts. So depending on how long it runs, I'm really interested to see how many watt hours of power we end up using for one load in this toilet. All right guys, it's done doing whatever it does. Let's check it out. That's really funny. All right, well, there you have it. All we have left is some crunchy bananas. Bailey, it's not for you. <laughs> Are you over here staying warm? <laughs> <laughs> it works. Yep, it works. The moral of the story is it works. This might seem really silly that we're this excited, but this is a game changer for us. For the last year and a half, we've had to go into the camper or we've had to go outside. And as the weather's gotten worse, going outside to a porta potty in the middle of the night is pretty horrible. It's been years since we've had a, a real toilet. And I don't know that I'm gonna call this <laughs> a real toilet, but it's a lot more of a real toilet than we've had in a long time. We still have an elephant in the room to address, which is our fully frozen, fully full porta potty, but we're gonna deal with that one tomorrow. So with that, we'll see you guys tomorrow. See you tomorrow. This is the heart of our off-grid system that is not only powering our incinerator toilet, but also our entire property and everything we do here. If you wanna learn more about this system, we have an entire video build series on it that I'll link down below, but here's the gist of it. It starts with two 10,000 watt Victron inverters that each output one leg of 110 power to give us 220 or 110 power. Here we have two 100 amp charge controllers. This is what takes the power from the solar panels and puts it into the batteries. Down here we have 12 48 volt server rack batteries giving us a total system capacity of 60 kilowatt hours. From building our camper I was pretty familiar with smaller off-grid systems but when it came to a system of this size for powering an entire property I was out of my element. So I reached out to the guys at Current Connected and they engineered us a system that has been absolutely flawless. It started with a phone consultation about what we were doing and kind of what we thought our power needs were and it ended with a complete system all the way from beginning to end with every single piece we needed to make it happen. From the day we installed all of this, we haven't had to touch a thing, change a setting, really do anything. It's just been, it's just been working. I love that they're able to provide a custom solution for any size system, from a single battery and a small inverter to a camper, to a system like this, to even something larger that could power a whole factory. So if you'd like to learn more about Current Connected and the products and services that they provide, check out the link in the description below. And we'd also like to give a huge thanks to Current Connected for their continued support of our off-grid property and for sponsoring this video.
Good morning, guys. A bit unusual for us. It's still November and we have feet of snow on the ground. We had a couple big storms come in. Cold storms, which means beautiful fluffy snow. We've really been enjoying it. But it's time to address something that we should have addressed a while ago, which is our completely full, completely frozen porta potty. The septic company can no longer get up here to service it. Riley called them today and they said if we drag it down to the main road, they can take it from there. So without really much of a plan at all, we're gonna try to get this porta potty down our hill. I let the smell out. Really? Yeah. You. Know that. No. Oh yeah. Oh. Ugh. for plan B, which was Riley's plan A, so. Right there. Okay, go ahead and pull a little bit. Okay. Oh yeah. Good, that's a lot more successful. Leftover concrete stuff. What are you doing? <laughs> We're making a sled. I want it pretty close to the back like that. <sighs> okay, you're pulling. Go ahead. Yep. Oh man, like a dream. That was really funny. <laughs> How are we gonna go down the steep hill? Cause this isn't even the hill. What if we just ratchet strapped it to, to the, the back the... of the Jeep? And then it doesn't matter? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully the porta potty doesn't pass Riley down the hill. That was uneventful, but that's okay. We made it to its final resting place. We're gonna drop it here and they're gonna pick it up. Oh. There's just a deer right standing right next to us. Well, goodbye my friend. It's time for you to find a new family or gas station or construction site. Someone else to bring joy. We don't need you anymore. So we have been using this toilet now for about two weeks and wanted to give you our honest thoughts so far. I've gotten so used to it now that I don't even really realize that it's any different than a normal toilet. 
Something else that we've noticed about it is that there is literally no smell in the bathroom once we use this thing. Because it's got a fan that constantly blows air outside while we're using it, there is no smell in the bathroom ever. Something that I was really interested in that I couldn't find a lot of information about is how much power does it actually consume? So over the last two weeks, we've been averaging how much power is consumed each time we use the restroom, and we've come up with about two kilowatt hours. Now, two kilowatt hours is nine minutes of runtime on our big diesel generator, or 13 minutes of full sunshine on our solar panels. Right now during the winter time, the energy consumed by this toilet is totally worth it for us, and during the summertime, it's not even gonna matter. This toilet was a significant investment for us. It cost about $5,000, which is a lot of money. But something that we really like about this toilet is that it's freestanding. Someday, if we have a septic system and we put a normal toilet in up here, we could take this toilet out. We could put it in an RV. We could put it in a cabin on the property. It's an investment that's gonna continue to pay for itself and solve a problem, hopefully several times down the road. So we've been using this toilet for two weeks now and we haven't checked the ash bin. We probably should have to make sure everything's working right, but since the banana test, we haven't checked it. So we're gonna check it with you guys right now. I have no idea what to expect. There it is, it doesn't really look that different than our fireplace ashes, and then we just throw it in a trash can. Honestly, I find this half gross and half really cool, but I think it's more cool than gross, especially because there's no smell. Like every RV toilet, every black water tank, everything we've ever dealt with, there's always a smell, and that's the worst part, and this just smells like a fireplace. This video is a little different than our normal videos, but we felt like this was something that you guys have asked a lot about, and it's something that we've been curious about as well. So we're looking forward to continuing to use the toilet, and we'll make sure to do a follow-up video in a few months to give you guys kind of a long-term update of what it's like to use an incinerator toilet. So with that, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.